guys welcome back to another crazy TV video and in today's case I have one of the most fascinating cases ever that I've read it was actually a big case back in the early 2000s you guys probably heard about this case if you guys do live in America because it was like one of the biggest cases although this case happened 18 years ago and as Scott Peterson has been convicted guilty there has been new information and evidence that has surfaced in the last like two three years and people are actually like kind of opening up to this case again kind of seeing it in a new light so I thought why not cover this case and it really makes me conflicted about what really happened before we get started I try to do like very white and silver today for some reason my ear cuff is silver my big dipper constellation ear cuff and this is a star and moon silver silver and some white cute top with a bit of body glitter so in today's case we're going to be talking about Lacey and scott peterson this case happened actually back in december 24th 2002 which was christmas eve so this was actually 18 years ago almost 20th anniversary very soon scott peterson who was ultimately found guilty of murdering his wife was followed by the paparazzi media like a big celebrity so let's talk about Lacey peterson who was born on may 4th 1975 and which makes her 27 Seven years old at the time that this has happened. Scott Peterson was 29 at the time. Lacey and Scott met each other in mid-1994 while visiting her friend's cafe and Scott was working there and it was reported that Lacey just fell in love with Scott like immediately. Lacey even told her mother that she met the man she would marry and eventually they started dating, they hit it off and they got married in 1997. Her parents said Lacey tried to be the best housewife and she was very enthusiastic about being the housewife and you know having that married life. She enjoyed cooking, entertaining, and she was so excited to welcome a new baby in 2002. Fast forward to December 24th, 2002 when she was 8 months pregnant and almost 5 years married to Scott Peterson. And this was the day that Lacey was last seen alive. So Scott Peterson told police that the last time he saw his wife was around 9.30 a.m. when he left to go fishing early in the morning. He claims that Lacey was watching a cooking TV show, she was going to mop the floor, bake some gingerbread cookies for Christmas and walk their dog like a normal daily schedule that she normally does. When Scott returned home from fishing, he saw that the backyard was open and their dog was wandering around with a muddy leash. So when Scott returned home, he put the clothes in the laundry and he said he took a shower. He just thought that maybe Lacey had gone to the store, maybe Lacey just went around for a walk. He didn't really think of anything and remember this was back in 2002 so it's not like we have iPhones that we could text right away. Cell phones were very limited back then. It's not like it was a normal thing to text and call like right away I believe. If you guys were older in 2002 and you guys remember the cell phone and like that whole protocol, let us know how it was back then but I personally don't even remember having a cell phone in 2002. So it became 5 15 p.m. and Lacey was nowhere to be seen so Scott called Lacey's stepfather and her mother. Now this was the first clue that is very odd. Apparently when Lacey's mother got a call from Scott, first thing Scott said was Lacey is is missing. A lot of people think this is very strange because when you call someone and someone is not home but you're worried is the first word that you use missing? I don't know if the word I would be using is missing. So a lot of people think that was an error or like a mistake that he did because he might have done something to Lacey. Lacey's father then called the police because Scott claimed that Lacey was missing. When the police arrived, they found Lacey's keys, wallet, and sunglasses were still in her purse at home. So it's not like she ran away from home or you know was gonna be gone for a long time. Police reported that the phone book was open to the defense lawyer page when they got there and when they interviewed Scott he was very just like completely calm and that was very odd for the police because usually when your wife is missing and the police are there you should be kind of like worried <laughs> you should be kind of frantic but Scott was completely calm and the police said he never asked any other questions such as are you guys gonna call back like what's gonna happen next can I have your names and your card you know like you should be asking some questions but apparently Scott just never asked anything first I suspected lie that Scott said to the police was Scott first claimed that he actually went golfing but later told the police he actually changed his mind and he went fishing. So remind you this was one of the first lies
realized that Scott told. But one of the odd clue was that Scott actually left a message to Lacey's phone that day, December 24th, around 2.15 p.m. saying, Hey, beautiful, it's 2.15, I'm leaving Berkeley. Maybe he was premeditating this, you know, he knew that the police was gonna look for evidence, so maybe he was pretending to call her. Or if he had nothing to do with Lacey, he was really just checking up on her and just calling her. This was such a big case, so the family and the volunteers actually set up a command center at a hotel to help record developments into the case and to spread the word. The people who were there, friends and family, claimed that Scott's behavior was very odd because before the media would come, Scott would always make sure his photo was taken down from the Lacey's memorial wall. People thought this was super odd because he should be a little bit more caring. Maybe why did he care about the media seeing his face specifically on the walls? Like, why did he want to hide? But his claim was that he wanted to make this about Lacey only and that he doesn't want to put the attention to himself and he just want all the attention to Lacey so people could just focus on finding her. It was very odd that also Scott was never on TV. He never wanted to do interviews. Only Lacey's parents and their family was doing these interviews and wanting to find her. It seemed like Scott just never showed emotions. He never was on TV saying, please find my wife. And he never seemed desperate to find her in the first place. After such scrutiny from the media, later on, Scott did do an interview and a lot of people thought that he showed no emotions. There was no tears in his eyes. And, and open up the center and wait for the volunteers to come and work on things. And, and then I'd go out and put up flyers. I knew exactly what to do and that was going to bring Lacey home. Unbearable, but you, you also have to recognize that Lacey is hurting worse than any of us. She's the one that's not with our family. She's the one that we need to find and bring home. I know you have so moments. That gives you focus. A lot of people saw this interview. People called him a narcissist. People called him a pathological liar. They just thought that they saw some odd patterns with Scott Peterson. I do understand that a lot of people deal with grief differently. Even me, if something happened, I probably wouldn't be crying 24 seven, that's true. But even if you're not crying in front of the TV, the way that he seemed so not urgent to find his missing wife. So fast forward to April 13th, 2003, a body of a fetus was found in the San Francisco Bay Shore. And a day later, Lacey's body was found one mile away from the baby. Now this area was actually where Scott God claimed that he went fishing. So a lot of people just connected the dots. Now this is where the story just takes a 360 turn. Till here, people did not find any physical evidence connecting anyone to Lacey's disappearance. And it was proven that indeed, right before Lacey went missing, he was in an affair with a mysterious woman. This woman was named Amber Frey. She claimed Scott told her he was single and looking. And once she found out about the affair, that's when she called the police and they started Started working together to phone tap their conversation with Scott. So one of the big, big clues that Amber Frey told the police was that on December 9th, which was two weeks before Lacey's disappearance, Scott told Amber that he was a widower and it would be the first Christmas without his wife. So actually, Amber thought that he was single all the time and his wife actually died. Why would he tell such an odd lie? If you're lying to that extent about your wife dying, I mean, the next weird odd lie comes when during Lacey's vigil in honor, he called Amber. Yes, he was still talking to Amber after Lacey has died. He called Amber and told her he was in Paris for New Year's Eve when he was indeed in Lacey's vigil. Okay, I'm like, stay still or something. I know, I'm like, I'm going to make it work. How's your, how was your New Year's? What's that? How was your New Year's? It's good. I'm just, uh, I went to the bar now, so I came out of the alley. Quiet alley. Is that nice? Yeah, it is. I can hear you. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Fireworks and everything. The Eiffel Tower. The people all playing American rock songs. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's very funny. What was this lie for him? He's saying he's in Paris, but he actually wasn't. He was in Lacey's vigil. But why? Like, like I'm trying to think and hear these recordings and the things that he lie about are so bizarre. Like, it's such little lies that he doesn't need to lie about. When they know they're gonna get caught at the end, are they not thinking about the consequence? Are they not thinking? Like, what is in their mind? I'm just trying to understand. During many of these phone calls, he still talked to Amber like he was in love, like they're still in 
their relationships even after all this lazy disappearance and he still called her amazing and he would still talk to Amber like there was nothing going on like everything's fine like but one of the conversation he did confess that he has been lying about his wife and that she was still alive so he is aware that he is lying it's not like he believes these lies and he's living in a fantasy world he is aware of exactly what he's saying so on April 13th 2003 he was arrested and was found with his beard and hair bleached his Mercedes was filled with things such as $15,000 a survival kit camping goods four phones two driver license of his and his brothers and Scott claims that he was living out of his cars just to get away from the media but the police do believe that he was actually preparing to flee to Mexico I mean by this point he said so many lies that we don't even know what to believe he was charged with two felony accounts of murder with premeditation he pled not guilty and on November 12 2004 he was found guilty of murdering his wife and sentenced to death Row. You guys have to know that there was actually no physical evidence that police found that links Lacey to Scott And he is still on death row today, so he is still alive in California prison somewhere So this is where the new evidence and information comes in 16 years later in 2018 Scott's family, especially Scott's sister, claims that they have new evidence where Scott deserves a new trial So there was a mailman that day that dropped off a mail at Scott and Lacey's house around 10.35 to 10 50 a.m. He says that whenever he comes around their house their dog should bark but this day he clearly remembers that the dog did not bark which may prove the theory that Scott was gone and Lacey was alive actually walking their dog. The next biggest evidence that Lacey was actually alive at this time was that there was 14 witnesses who claimed that they saw a woman who looked pregnant or who was a heavier set or who just looks exactly like Lacey walking a big dog. They even actually got the breed of the dog right as well and they called police saying that they saw Lacey or someone that looked like Lacey but only four witnesses were followed up by the police and the rest never got a police call back so Scott's family are claiming that why did all these witnesses who testified and said that they saw Lacey that morning alive but they never got a call back from the police to be followed up with I mean if these 14, 14 is a lot of people you know 14 witnesses if they did really see Lacey that means that she was alive that morning actually walking her dog on December 24th, Scott actually went to his warehouse around 10 a.m. and he logged onto this computer which shows that he was indeed on his computer 10.15 a.m. till 10.57 a.m. So this does prove that Scott and Lacey was actually at two different locations, contradicting the theory that Scott actually murdered his wife in the morning and took her to the fishing spot. Also in the trial, original trial of Scott Peterson, one of the scent dogs that was used for forensic evidence was claim to be unqualified. So the fact that they use an unqualified dog to use as an evidence in the court, Scott's family just claims that that is just bizarre. Now this clue actually might be a nail in the hammer. Was that what, is that the phrase you just call it? December 24th, there was a reported burglary that happened around the same time when Lacey was walking the dog. Now this burglary actually happened a couple of houses that was actually right across from Lacey's and Scott's house. So burglars were later arrested for the burglary, but claimed that it happened on December 26th and police actually believe them and rule this out which was super odd because the witnesses reported it on December 24th that the bur burglary happened so and a lot of people are saying by December 26th there was actually media and police surfacing that area so a burglary happening on the day when it's a crowded house and a street it just completely doesn't make sense which means that the burglary actually did happen December 24th right around the time when Lacey went missing now this is one of a far-fetched clue but we'll just say it anyway just to kind of see what you guys think there was a confession from one of the inmates who claims that he knows one of the burglars was confessed that Lacey confronted the burglars during the burglary on, on December 24th this conversation was recorded and they said that they gave it to the police or you know whoever was in charge of this case but the police deny that they don't have any copy and this claim and possible evidence was never presented or never used all this evidence might actually ultimately contradict the theory or the court statement that Scott did something to Lacey in the morning of December 24th now when the burglars were arrested Scott Todd which was one of the burglars his first words were I had nothing to do with the pregnant girl the detective said I am not here to talk to you about the pregnant girl I want to talk to you about 
about the burglary and never really pursued the line of questions regarding Lacey. When one of the burglars was later confronted by Scott's defense team about Lacey's disappearance, they said he has come unglued and started yelling, you have no evidence, and then said he would take the fifth and would no longer talk about the case. All again, super weird because if the burglar really had nothing to do with it, why would he plead the fifth, which actually gives him the right to not talk about anything at all? Can this all mean ultimately put Scott in jail on death row for something that he might have not done? Now, all these evidences might not completely rule Scott out. It just means that maybe he had something to do with it, just not physically himself. I mean, there's a lot of theories about it. My two cents about this case is that I do feel Feel like the new evidences does point a lot of questions that he should not be on death row when there's just so many questions to be answered by the police I mean there's just so many things that still need to be proven I but I do still believe there's something odd about this guy Scott Peterson like, if Scott really didn't do it then he is just a really unlucky weird creepy guy living in his own fantasy world where I think he kind of likes and feeds off of negative drama and attention that's the only theory I could say. I mean, there are people who feed off of negative energy and they kind of like, like it. So you guys, I am so, so curious to find out what you guys have thought about this case. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to hit the like button if you like that. It really helps me out a lot. Subscribe and hit the notification bell because I reply to all my early words. Bye!